Hey guys and welcome to a new tutorial video on how to create a 2D MMORPG or let's say welcome to the next episode. Um, in this episode we are going into um, drawing a character. So um, how can we draw basically a character who or a character sheet who looks like, uh, give me a second, who looks like this as you can see. Um, so. Um, how can we walk with him? How can we draw just a single picture in mono game? And yeah, um, if you um, like want to have another sprite sheet, um, you can just change later on after this tutorial um, some variables on the source code, and then you can um, basically um, use your own sprite sheets. Um, I will um, upload all graphics necessary which you need. Um, the link will be down below into my description, next to the Discord link, next to my Patreon link, and next to my Facebook link. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, so, um, what we are going to do now. Um, first of all, we have to load up the graphics into our content pipeline, which we are going to do right now. Um, so you click on your client project, you open up your content pipeline with double click. There you go. And then I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I call this folder uh, characters. And in characters I will insert, let's say, a ton of graphics, 178 graphics which is a bit overkill. Um, at the file outside the target directory, would you like to do this? Copy the file to the directory. Yes, I want to do that. Okay, let's wait till everything is loaded up. There you go. And then we are going to build the content. And then our characters should be um, imported to our content pipeline. And now what we have to do basically is we have to load up those graphics into a graphic array and then so we have access to those graphics and we can draw them on the game screen. Good. Um, to start with we are going to create a new class which will be called simple as that graphics. So create a new class and we call this class graphics. And yeah um, Again, if you see me looking to the right side, or uh, yeah, to the right side, um, I'm looking to my prepared source code again. I will again copy and paste everything into my project and trying to explain everything very well for you guys. And if you can't follow me, just um, write a comment and I try to answer you as soon as I can, or join my Discord server and we can discuss or solve your problems later on. Good. Um, First of all, we are going to add some um, uh, directives. Um, we do need, what do we need? Um, first of all, we can remove that one, we can remove that one and that one. So we are adding um, using Microsoft.xna.framework.content. Um, As next, we need Microsoft.xna right dot framework dot graphics as next we do need using um do we need geon bit no we do not need geon bit we do need microsoft xna dot framework and also we do need our bindings um i guess for later on and then we do need using system dot io also for later on. Okay. Um, so basically, before we start, um, let me check something. Good, 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 good. Um, we do need another nugget package added to our client project. Um, this is a um, let's say a extended feature of Mono Game. So you click on references, right click and add uh, or manage nugget packages. And then you click on pros and we are looking for, how does it called? A mono game and extend it. Good. 
and we are going to use let me see uh where is it there you go um monogame extended dot extended by dylan wilson um you're going to install this and um the latest version the latest stable version and then you are good to go and then we can use on top on our directive we can say let me um resize it so you can see actually something um we can say using um monogame dot utilities no not utilities wait a second wait a second i didn't install it right okay <laughs> again uh Mono game extend man mono game extended there you go where is it mono game extended install I'm such a retard didn't install it by myself right okay good so it is installed or not okay now it is installed perfect now you can close it go to graphics and say mono game dot extended so why do we need the extended mono game because it is an easy way now to draw and slice those graphics up and yeah good um first of all we do need some variables so um because we want to load um, more than one graphic okay um we need to create a texture to the array um graphics monogame graphics always gets um, called by texture 2d and so we are going to use public static why static because we want to access this variable specific um, from other classes we say um, public static texture 2d then we create an array out of that and we say just simple characters equals to new um, texture 2d and um, we basically have 178 characters in our content pipeline but i only want um, to load up let's say 10 for example the first 10 graphics i want to load mm, good as next we are going to um, create our first graphic method this will be our init initial <laughs> this word is so hard man <laughs> i'm doing like already i don't know 20 till 30 videos and i still can't pronounce this shitty thing correct like it it is initialized initializing in initializing initialize 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 graphics that's what we are going to do so <laughs> public static void initialize initialize graphics and we do need a parameter of a content manager and we call this just manager um, because we need to access um, our content right here um, where we um, load our content okay and uh, we need to access this in our graphics um, class because we want to load all our graphics in this class from our content pipeline and that's where we um, need to access our content manager through the code um, because it is not a static variable um, as we have to create a new content and hit the uh, game for example and whatsoever okay um good in initialize graphics we are basically um initialize all our graphics okay so we load up all our graphics into the array so we can show them later on in game so that's why we are going to create directly another function this will be a public no this is going to be a private a static void because we do not um, need to access it from other classes it will be only called from the um, graphics class and we say um, check characters so public static void um, check characters or let's say um load characters that is a better um a better name right and what do we need we do need again a content manager and call it manager 
because we do want to load the graphics from our contact pipeline again. So um, now we need to fill our array, our um, texture to the character array with the graphic information. So um, how are we going to do that? So we create a for loop. So we say for int i equals one. We are starting with one because our texture name, as you remember, um, where is it? Characters, our texture name starts with one and not with zero. So we are starting with the index one and not with the index zero. And always remember when you are doing um, my way, um, where you do less code to load up multiple graphics, um, you need to name your um, graphics with numbers. So uh, number one, number two, number three, number four. So the for loop um, can actually loop through these graphics. So we say um, for int i equals one, and we say i is less than um, less or equals now let's say less than um, characters characters dot length so the length of our array and then we say i plus plus good and now the magic happens um now we are loading actually the characters up into our array that's where we say characters array i um, equals manager dot load so what do we want to load we want to load a texture 2d so we say texture 2d and um, now we need our asset name our uh, string path so um, if we are looking correctly our string path is um, directly characters and then our uh, our uh, sprites our uh, picture files so we say um, characters slash plus i dot to string and that's it now he loops through every graphic um, with the um, with the number one two three four five and um, is getting um, the one the two the three and five picture is that simple okay um now we have loaded up or we will load up our graphics so we say um, load characters in, in initialize <laughs> graphics load characters and our parameter will be our manager and now um, what's very important is uh, we have to call our initialize graphics from our let me see uh, from our initialize method of um, our main function our game one cs function so initialize right here um, now we have to say uh, still we are not going to connect to the server because it is still uh, client side stuff to draw um, pictures. Now we have to say um, graphics dot initialize graphics and which parameter do we um, um, fill it so we say uh, content. This is um, our content manager from our content pipeline and then we are passing um, passing was the word I was looking for. <laughs> now we are passing our content uh, into our graphics class and then uh, we can load up those graphics um, from another class. Okay, um, so basically we have loaded up now all our graphics, our character graphics and now um, here's the thing. Um, how do we actually um, draw our player on the screen? So um, for that we are going to create another function or another method, sorry for that. And we call this method um, public static void and we say render render graphics. Okay, and um, basically we do need a, a parameter of a sprite batch and this sprite batch we are calling of course um, sprite batch, that's simple. So why do we need a sprite batch? So if you remember correctly, to draw graphics on um, on the on the mono game game screen, you always have you you have to um, start with um, sprite batch begin and sprite batch end, and then you um, draw every single thing in between both um, both lines. 
and because in our graphics class um, this is our main class where we draw all our graphics um, we do need our sprite batch but we are doing it uh, another way we are just going back to our game one cs and we say public static sprite batch sprite batch that simple now we go back to our graphics and we remove our parameter and now we can say um, game one dot sprite batch dot begin now we can um, basically start drawing all our graphics and at the end we can say game one sprite batch dot um, dot end great stuff right good um am i correct yes okay um, i'm just checking my prepared source code if i'm <laughs> correct and uh, i don't want to mess up for you so um you have the full experience of a working source code okay um as next um we want to draw our player for that we want to create or first of all we want to draw our sprite okay our full sprite on the game screen so um, we are going to create another function we call this private static void why we have to use uh, keep using static because um, you only can call static uh, methods within a static method that's why um, we are keep using static um, what is basically a static um, function I uh, method is basically it remains forever okay um, there's no I there's just one instance of this method and it remains forever so you don't have to um, create a new instance of a class um, is it good you may ask yes it is actually in some cases it is bad but um, in this case it is um, the best way good um, we are creating now um, a new function called uh, method sorry I keep calling functions for some reason um, a private static void draw player okay for draw player um, we don't need any parameter yet later on we pa uh, need to pass an index so we can um, draw other players um, later on but um, first of all we want to um, draw our local player and we do need another private static uh, void uh, static void and we say this is the draw sprite so um, there where we are this is um, how we draw the sprites on the game screen so um, now you're asking but wait we uh, have the draw player method why we do need a draw sprite method well this is basically very simple um, later on you want to draw NPCs you want to draw I don't know some other stuff and that's why we make a, a complete whole method which draw every single one and then um, we are good to go so for the draw sprite we actually do need um, some parameters this will be first of all an integer and this will be a, a sprite right here then we do need another integer we call this x2 for later on for the position of the player uh, we do need another integer for the y-axis uh, so we say y2 and then we do need a rectangle and we say source rec okay so in the draw sprite method we are saying um, basically very simple we can say game one game game one dot sprite batch and um, sprite batch dot draw sorry and now we can say we can draw a, um, a sprite um, in this case I want to show you an example so um, when we access our our array which we have created and which we have filled with our character information and our character sprites we can say characters um, one index one um, equals to new vector dot no not you equals vector dot zero and um, we do need a s we do need nothing else just a color so we say color dot white and um, by color dot white we don't want to tint um, the picture so when we say color white then it would um, 
it shows you the the um yeah the the, the normal picture okay <laughs> good um now we can draw um call this function draw sprite in our render graphics in between our sprite batch begin and sprite batch end and okay we have to pass um some variables so we um just put in some um useless stuff one 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 and uh I don't know, new rectangle. Uh, yeah, that's um, that's what we are going to do because we are not using any of these parameters right now. And now we can say we copy render graphics and we are going into our game one class. We are scrolling way down to our draw function. And now we can say um, render graphics and now all our graphics will get rendered. Um, first of all, graphics dot render graphics. So when I hit start, you should see now a fully drawn uh, character. Let's see. What happens? There you go. Now you see our character um, was drawn on the game screen, but now here's the magic. Look. Um, you now successfully have loaded up um, textures in an array and um, call the, the graphics from the array. So now um, look at that. So when we click, you, you keep the game running, okay? Keep the game running. You go back to graphics. You scroll down to draw sprite, right? And now you hit um, next to, the, um, to your line, like uh, next to your number, you hit the left click. Um, sorry, on the <laughs> on the on the gray side, on the where we left side, on um on your draw function, you hit the left click, and boom, what happens? It turns yellow. That means now you are in debug mode. Um, you added a breakpoint where where the um game basically stops working, and now you can edit the code alive without closing the game, and um you can change uh, variables, you can change parameters. And then you hit um, later on continue and the game keeps um, running without restarting and whatsoever. So now when we hit number two right here, remove the breakpoint with another left click and then hit continue. Then our um, tile set, our character spreadsheet should change to the next number of, um, of our content pipeline. So let's see, uh, we hit continue and what happens? Boom, we have another character there. Now we click again and let's say we type in the number five because we have loaded up, I guess, 10 character sets. We load up um, character five and what happens? Boom. There you go. Magic, right? <laughs> okay. Um, let's say we keep playing with the character number five. Um, now I have to close um, the, the program because um, we are adding new methods to it. Um, we want, of course, um, just show, i give you an example, um, number five. We only want to draw um, this sprite. Okay, we do not want to draw everything because um, we only want to draw one, let's say, one, one square um, from the character. Okay. Um, the way how we do it is actually happens or the magic happens in our draw player method. So for that I have to look up into my source code uh, because this is pretty much um, hard to do when you're doing it from scratch. So first of all we um, do need to create a new byte and we call this anim. The anim stands for animation so we know um, on which animation state um, the player is currently at. So the animation states means is he walking down, is he walking left, is he walking right, and whatsoever. Um, so we have a, a cool little animation later on um, when the character moves. Um, as next, we do need um, two integers. Uh, we need an integer named x and an integer named y. And we do need a rectangle, and we call this source rect, um, source rec. Uh, as next, we do need uh, a sprite number, so we say int sprite num, so we know um, which 
character um, we are playing and then we do need an integer sprite left the sprite left is pretty hard to explain it is basically um, on which position the player is currently at on the sprite sheet okay um, good um, now we assign those variables so we say um, sprite sprite num equals to let's say um, we loaded up 1 to 10 I want to play character let's say 3 is looking cool so I say sprite num number 3 uh, equals number 3 and now we want to reset our animation frame which means reset frame and we say anim equals um, animation state number 1 okay um, Now let's see. This is pretty hard to do um, because I don't want to show you the movement yet. I just want to show you how to draw the player um, because the movement is another story which is pretty hard to understand if you don't understand the um, drawing player method. Okay, so we say. Um, source rect okay source rect equals new rect anchor and then we say um, our animation state okay so our anim animation state multiplied by um, characters our um, character num this is our sprite num right here we pass it in right here um, and the width okay the width um, divided by four so why we are say divided by four this is um now the parameters you have to change based on your sprite sheet we have basically when you look closely now uh, you can't see that because of the black uh, black background we have one row we have two rows we have three rows and when the black uh, disappears we have a fourth row okay you can see it here better there's a fourth row and the same we do have on the other side one two three and four that's why we say divided by four and then we hit a comma and we say sprite left multiplied by characters um our sprite num um dot height divided by four and then we say um comma uh characters uh, sprite num um dot dot width divided by four and um, we are going to say characters sprite now we need to divide now the height again divided by four was that correct let me see This is this is correct. Oh yeah, um, I need to close it right here, and that's okay. That's okay. So sprite left isn't set yet. So we say um, sprite left equals I don't know um zero. Uh, zero basically means um, the state um the state of the picture um this is um state one so one two three and four but it starts with zero one two and three and our state will be um i guess zero for not walking so this is the idle idle animation idle animation mm -hmm. <laughs> good um now we can say um we have to draw the player on a certain position so we say x equals um yeah. <laughs> there is normally now um the player index right here um our index is currently at uh, the player position is currently zero because we are not moving multiplied by 32 um because of our um animation sprite sheet so um y32 this is um basically a square of a 
of the picture right here. This is 32 by 32. Um, if you're using uh, different spreadsheets, you make sure you know what your um, size is of your of your of your cell right there. Is it 32 by 32? Is it 64 by 64? Is it 128 by 128? Or um, I don't know, uh, 64 by 36 or whatever. It depends on your spreadsheet. I'm using the standard RPG Maker spreadsheets because I love them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, zero multiplied by 32. And then we say plus, um, later on there's the offset, which we are adding later, um, plus zero, it is currently the offset. And then we say minus um, characters, uh, sprite num um, dot width, um, divided by four, again four rows, minus 32, because um, the square, you know, um, divided by two. This is our x, and then our y is um, pretty much simple. Um, we say um, again zero multiplied by thirty-two um, plus zero, and then we are done. Okay, and now we can call within our draw player method. We can say draw sprite. Oh no, draw able component. We can say draw sprite, and we say um, sprite num. Sorry, sprite num. We say x, we say y, and we say our source rank. Perfect. And now on our draw sprite function, we are changing the parameters. We say we are changing the number five uh, to our sprite. And then um, we are going to um, create, instead of a vector zero, we are creating a new vector two. And we are saying x, y, uh, then we hit another comma, um, we do need a rectangle, this will be our source rack, and another comma is our color white. So we say x2 and x uh, y2. Okay, now when we hit start, um, not the whole picture should appear now, um, now we have sliced the picture and only um, the character should show. If I'm correct, I don't know. And nothing happens. The character is <laughs> not there. <laughs> Good. This is great. Um, this is super great. Why is that great? Let me see. Okay. Okay. I see what happens there. Um, we need to create this time two functions, not two methods. Um, oh no, we, okay, this is the problem. Draw sprite, we have calling on the render graphics a draw sprite, but in this time we need to call the draw player method. Draw player, there you go. Perfect, now we hit start and now it should work, hopefully. Yep, there you go. As you can see, there's our player, our single digit player. And um, now you can basically draw your character. You can load up character into your graphics array and you can call your um, graphic just by code. Um, that simple. And now we are basically done. And now you can slice the picture and um, draw the player itself. Um, on the next episode, I will show you how to move the player and um, if we have enough time, because I want to keep those um, videos pretty much um, low, like um, faster and not that like two hour tutorials again. Um, yeah, and um, if we have enough time, which I don't, <laughs> because I'm pretty slow at um, explaining and shit. Um, yeah, then we are going into the animation and how the character moves from position X to position X2 and um, it keeps a smooth animation to those position. Okay, um, I hope you like this video. Um, if yes, hit a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you didn't already. Um, if you want to support me, you can check out my Patreon page. Um, you can join my Discord server. You can like my Facebook page and, and, and. So, um, 
thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it and uh see you in the next video bye bye